Hello, today I want to have a look at how I've put together this card. Now this is a mini box frame but I've made it into an easel card. So I've got a stopper down here and a hinge on the back and then the actual card itself is made within a box frame. Now I've done, this is a mini box frame, I've made it out of um, A4 or US letter sheets of card um, and it's just a matter of figuring out what size card you need to start with to end up with the size you want at the end. So it uses quite a lot, it uses more card than you imagine when you make one of these because the sides are rolled up and in um, to actually create quite a, a strong edge. But the great thing about them is you, you get lots of dimension uh, when you add things, you kind of depth them. But, uh, yeah, it, it just makes it some, into something quite special. And you, you do need a stopper, but anything really does as a stopper, just raise it up on some foam pads. Now, I've used the papers from the Butterfly Garden collection, but really anything that you have, you could use. Um, so, so I've made this version without any foiling on. Um, but the version I'm going to put together as I go along in my videos has got some foiling on. Now, I don't want to dwell on how to do the foiling. because I've done lots of videos on how to do foiling. But just to say, you, you need to make sure you do it before you start wanting, before you've stuck it in the frame. You can't foil it after you put it in the frame. It might sound obvious, but... I had every intention of doing some foiling on that and found I'd put it together and hadn't done the foiling. So I've, I've foiled a sentiment on that. Um, and I've also got some cutting and boss, boss um, foiled butterflies, um, as well as some die cuts and other bits and pieces that I'll use when I put the card together. Okay, and the, the butterfly garden papers, well, yeah, they just, I've, I've used, um, the bottom piece of that and that was the other half of it and then I've got that on the back and then I've got these papers to, to use and I shall make up some pieces for around the edge um, and if you look at some of my other videos I've gone through the, the butterfly garden papers um, in there it's a really wonderful collection of papers so I'm going to be using my scoring board and I'm going to be using for now that's a template I've made and I bear with me a second. All right, so I've, I've made myself a template and, and this will be on my blog post with explanations. Um, you cut the card for this particular size box card to eight inches by 10 inches. So I've done that, but I'm starting off with these sheets of card that I need to cut down so I shall. I need to cut those down and then I'm going to show you all the scoring and how to figure out where you cut and on my template here I've numbered the lines I'm going to cut because I think that's the best order to cut them in so that you don't get confused okay so it looks like lots of scoring you're probably thinking oh no lots of measuring but with the scoreboard, it's really easy. It does basically does all the measuring for you. So I'm going to pull, stop the camera and get set up to use the scoreboard. Uh, I need to move my, my video camera so it's at a completely different angle so you can see what I'm doing. So I'll need to stitch the bits of video together in the, before I actually upload it. So I'm going to cut my card to size and get my camera moved. And then I should come back and show you all the scoring. Okay, so I've cut my piece of cream card down to 8 inches along here and 10 inches this way. And it doesn't matter really which side you start on. Because um, you need to do the same on all of them to begin with. So I'm just going to place it and make sure... All the way down is up against the edge on the left hand side. Make sure it's laying flat and into the corner. And then I'm going to score at the half inch mark. And that needs to come all the way down. 
and then at the one inch mark at the one and a half and the two okay so all my score lines are half an inch apart and then I'm going to turn the card around and score in from the other side and do exactly the same. Now, because I'm turning the card around, there's two advantages to that. If I have cut my card size slightly wrong so it's just a fraction more or less than eight inches it won't matter because the difference will end up being the difference in the middle of the card and rather than be leaving me with a uh, a piece here that's either too short or too long okay so that's one reason for turning it around the other is i don't have to calculate um, how far in I need to come in to get my next score line here. I'm just always working from the zero out to the two. Okay, so now I turn it around and I do the other edges. So again, make sure you've got your card into the corner and the half inch. And the one inch. And the one and a half and the two and then turn it around and do from the other edge all right if i when i get to this stage i'm not careful the card doesn't want to sit still so forgive me if my fingers are in the way but i do need to make sure it's in the right place It's easier once you've done the, the first one. You've got somewhere to put your fingers down. And the last one on the two. So I've done the same on all four sides so far. And then on two opposite sides, I need to do some more marks. It doesn't really matter which two opposite sides, but I usually do it on the short ones. Okay, so just put your card back in place. And this, though I'm going to score it, this is really a guide for cutting. Okay, lots of these lines are really a, a guide for cutting rather than folding. Um, so this one, I want to go to the two and a half and I want to score just down to where my score line meets this line going across. So just down to the one inch mark here. And then I'm going to flip my card over and do the same coming in from the other edge. And again, because I'm always coming in from the edge, if my card size isn't cut exactly, it doesn't matter. And then I need to flip the card over end on end so that I'm working on the opposite edge. Okay, it has to be opposite edges. So starting at two and a half, coming down to the one inch mark, meeting with my score line, flip it over and score down the one inch mark where my lines meet. Okay, and that is all of the scoring done. That didn't take very long at all. So now I'm just going to reset the camera so, you can, so I can sit at my desk and show you what I do with the cutting. OK, so bear with me while I move the camera and then I shall be back with you. Hello, welcome back. Um, now I've scored my piece of card, I need to mark my cut lines um, so that I don't get confused when I'm cutting. I'm sure when you've had some practice, you won't need to mark them. I've got them marked on my template here. OK. So I'm going to 
repeat these markings on here. I'm just going to do them in pencil um, so that you can see where I'm cutting. So bear with me. And I shall describe what we're doing. Now, where we had these short lines that just go down to meet the, the, the second score line down, we're going to want to cut across that corner. So I'm just going to put a faint pencil line to remind me that I'm going across that corner. I'm going to do that on all four. And I'm just putting these in by hand because I can, I can point the scissors straight corner to corner. Okay, and then let me get this the same way round. So I'm going to use my template here and I'm going to copy these across. So on this one, I want to go down three sections but on that one I want to go down all four and then this one is three sections so that corner piece comes out completely and then that one also comes out and I'm going to cut there on my short line that one that one needs to come all the way down there and so does that one. Okay. So all the way down and all the way down. And that one goes all the way across. And then I can turn it around and repeat at the other end. So I'm going to have that one. And that one's going to come all the way down. And so is that one. And so is that one, but that one's only kind of come down three sections. And you can't really see what I'm doing. So here, this line here only comes across to the third score line, but this one comes across the fourth one. And then in from the other side, I come across all four and across all four, only across two and then diagonal. You'll see why when I've cut it out. There we are, and that's all four corners marked. So now I'm going to cut it out. Move this out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to come down my mark I've lined down to the full score line there, and then I can come across this one and go across all four, and then on this one, just in three, and then that piece falls out, and then I'm going to take this one down all four and then in for those two and then I need to cut across this corner piece from one corner to the next okay so I've done one I'm going to pause the camera and, um, and do another two and then I'll come back to you for the last one. Okay, so for the last one, I'm going to start with this line here as so I go across th uh, to the third score line. And then I'm going to do the next one across the fourth. And then I'm going to turn my card around and I'm going to do the next one here. So that's that's number three. And that goes across all four. And these pieces come away. And then my next one goes across all four. OK. 
Okay, the next one only goes across to the second one and meets that diagonal line we've put in. Then I cut that piece out. Okay, so if you've got if you've penciled lines in and you don't want them to show, now is the time to rub them out. So I'm just going to do that. Okay, so I've rubbed out my pencil lines and I've done that because they're on the side that will end up showing. Okay, so these bits here, it should be out of bend. Okay, I want to trim those a little bit because they're just going to fold inside the ends of my box. So I'm just going to take out kind of to a point that the thickness of the score line on the top and the bottom and it'll just make it a bit easier when we're putting the, the box together now some box box frame designs have these these flaps on and some don't uh, it's a matter of personal preference um, i like to have them because i think you you get a need to look in corner Just trimming those a little bit. Okay, so I've really pretty much just taken out the, the thickness of the score line on those. I'll take a little bit more of the top corner of that one. So I've trimmed those and the next job is to burnish all the score lines so I want to fold this way okay so as I say my pencil lines would end up showing if I hadn't rubbed them out so you can burnish with your scoring tool and it's a matter of doing all of the fold lines so in like this and just rubbing it down so that you end up with nice sharp creases okay so I'm gonna pause the camera while I do all those and then show you the next stage okay I have burnished all of my score lines now at this stage I think it's quite a good idea before we start adding tape to actually see how the sides come together um, and then if we've got any bits of card that are uh, in the way I need trimming we can do that before we've got tape to deal with so the sides basically roll up and this edge ends up there and then these flaps at the ends just go over the end let me show you over the end actually neaten that corner okay so they're going to go up there like that and then these ones are going to end up in here now at this stage if this is too tight I can still trim this and I'm going to trim just along here where I can see my my score line I'm just going to take a tiny bit of card off so I'm basically against the other edge of the score line is where I've cut. And do the same on the other side. Just a, just a tiny tiny piece of card lost the camera there we are just gonna focus on it let me use the other hand
There you go, you can see what a tiny piece of card I've taken off. Okay, it's literally the width of my score line is what I've trimmed away. Okay, and I think I'm probably going to need to do the same the other end, but I'm going to check. I'm just going to roll the sides in. Put yeah, that flap in. And just make sure there is space in the middle. I have to go down there, and again, that's very tight, so I'm going to do the same at that end. Literally the width of the score line. And then I shall check again. That's better, that lets those sides come in nice and tight. Okay, so now we need to get it. Did I recheck really the other end? Let me just do that and check that other end. see inside how neat that will be okay. oh, that's a better angle that's better so you can see how neat those inside edges are okay so now we need some tape now I like to use the um, high tack double-sided tape so I'm going to do this now the tape needs to go on the edge here of all the outside pieces okay it's a new roll of tape Trim off that bit. Just stuck that to one of my bits of card that I trimmed off. Otherwise, it'll, it'll stick somewhere I don't want it. So I'm just going to come along there. Put that on all four sides. logic that this is going on the right side because that is going to curl under okay so the tape ends up on the underside yeah I haven't gone mad that really is where the tape needs to go Now you might also want to put a bit of tape on that diagonal there because that ends up hold it in. Coming over the top there and it'll help keep the corner neat. Okay, but there's no point in putting a lot on because there's only a small area that makes contact. And that does need to go on the inside, not the outside. So I just want a 
a very small piece of tape. Where's my cutter piece? Let's put it there. Now sometimes when you're doing these tiny bits, it's easy just to cut a piece of your roll and then just take little tiny bits as you go. that on the edge of my corners okay so now we need to get this stuck down in the right place now I'm not going to try and fold it in and get it to stick because it will probably stick in the wrong place before I get this where it needs to be so the thing to do is to fold this in half and I usually just start the end going and then fold that double sized piece over okay and then I pull out the end of the tape and I should have then ended up with that and it will lay flat like that and it comes up and it's in the right place let me do another one so I can Start my tape. I'm just always very nervous about taking the whole backing off of high tack tape. It sticks in the wrong place so easily. So I've got that laying flat on the second score line, and then I'm going to fold it in so that, that whole piece lays flat, and then I can take my tape out. That goes flat. And then those those sides are done. Okay, I'm going to leave those flat for a minute while I do the ends. So before I do this, because otherwise I'm going to not be able to get to them, I need to take those off. Now I'm going to be quite careful here. So I'm just going to turn my my bits of um, release and I've dropped a piece that piece from here turn it round so I, I can grab it once I've folded this in um, because I don't want these two bits to stick together Actually, I am going to have to take those off afterwards. So let me put that back. It was. And I'm going to turn that one back round. And I'm going to leave those where they are for a minute. And then use my pokey tool to get them off afterwards. So this, this is only a short piece. I'm going to take it all off. Fold it flat on the second line. Fold it all the way in. And then it'll stand up. And then do the same with the other end. So flat on the second line, and then all the way in. And then I'm going to get my pokey tool. I'm going to get my sharp pokey tool, well, my not so sharp one. And I'm just going to poke that underneath and get the the. Um, the release off the double sided tape because I want that to come off so at this point you conclude maybe it would have been easier with wet glue but I do find it doesn't grab very quickly there we are there's one I'm just going to pause the camera while I get the others out okay so I've got those out and now I need to kind of wriggle the thing together 
So I want to make sure that these flaps on the end tuck underneath my corners. So you just need to carefully bring those together. And then when you're sure you've got the corner all the way in, you can press down on that piece of high tack and that will hold that in place. That's that one. And this one. And this, this is why you trim these slightly. Because otherwise they just don't want to go in. Oh, and I've got one more to do. Because the last one is always the hardest one. Get that under there. So I'm going to use my pokey tool to lift that. There we are, that can go in there. Just going to hold that up. There we are. So that's all my corners together. Okay, so that's the um, box frame made. Now, when I did my foiling, I did cut it slightly oversized. So my next job is to figure out exactly where that needs to fit and to actually find it. There we are. Right. So this is, yes, this is slightly oversized. So if you want to, you could have put it in before you stuck everything down. Okay, but if you're like me, you'll get carried away and you'll forget. So that needs to be trimmed just a little bit so that it'll fit. Now the inside measurement is three inches by five inches. So let me just grab my trimmer. And to trim it, I'm using the Couture Creations Mini Guillotine. This is gonna be a little bit big on either side, I think. So it wants to be three inches overall, but I don't wanna take that all off that side. And at the moment it's three, yeah, so if I take quarter of an inch off that side, Turn it round, and I'm going to go three inches there. This has a self-sharpening blade, so I'm, I'm really happy with that. And then this one to be five inches, and I think I'm just going to take all of that off the top. Okay, and then that will fit nicely in there. It's a bit tight, but yeah, I might just trim that a little bit more, or I don't want to push it all in because I need to trim it. Right, that needs to come have just a sliver off the side. I'm going to take it off that side. And I do find this is great for those things where you need to just take something down a tiny amount. You can take very, very tiny slivers off a piece of paper and get a perfect edge. There. So, you need to take it out with the glue on the back. There we are. Okay, so that just needs... Um, and double sided tape or glue on the back. So I can put some glue on this and just put it in place. There we are. And then on my one that I, I've already made up. I cut some decorative strips to half an inch uh, and use those around the edge. Now, it just so happens that the, the metal piece on this here is half an inch wide, is what I've found. Um, and it makes it, it, it's then really easy to cut half inch strips. 
Um, is that going to be? That's not big enough. Let's have a piece of this. Okay, so if I'm going to perhaps put some of this nice purple around the edge, that will that will go very nicely. So I need to make this a bit shorter. Let's trim that end off. Hold it down with the guard, and then to cut straight. Okay, um, and the finished size of this is six inches, so I'm going to cut a, a six inch piece, maybe just over six inches. And then if I want half inch strips, the easiest thing is to come in and line up with the edge of that metal strip. Hold the guard down on it. And then it cuts me a perfect half inch strip. And that's just what I need to go around my frame. So if you have, if you've had trouble with your corners, and you, you found getting the, the backing off the double sided tape too fiddly or you've tried using wet glue and it, it doesn't stick too well. Don't worry because when you put these strips on that will hold those corners in place perfectly for you. Okay, so I'm going to cut some more of those and put those in place. I'll come back to you in a moment. Okay, so I've cut my strips. I'm going to use some more high tack tape to stick those in place. I'm going to put that along the top of my frame. You could wet glue these if you want to. And I'm going to do the long sides first. Again, I'm going to start to peel it. And then I'm going to get this in place. I can just put my fingers along the sides, make sure that's lined up, stick it at one end and then carefully, gradually smooth it down to the other end. Bring that out and I'm going to do the other side. up at the other end where it's not going to stick and then come along here press it down on my tape and then gradually smoothing it as I go take the tape out to the other end And then for the shorts, I, the, I'm not worried if it's overlapping at the end a little bit. I'm going to trim that off afterwards. Okay, in fact, it's almost better that it does overlap a little bit. You, you, get, you can get a nice neat edge. So then I can do these ones. Obviously, I've got lots of overhang on this on the shorter edge. It's lined up. I 
and then I can turn over on the back use my scissors and trim and then I, I get a nice neat corner let's just finish off the bottom one and then I can show you how we make the um, easel part So for the easel part, you need another sheet of card. Okay. So I've got another sheet of the same card. Now, remember I said that if you haven't measured exactly right, it doesn't matter. So for that reason, I have not pre-cut the card for my face because it wants to be the same width as this frame. But with all this bending and folding, I thought there's a good chance we'll end up just a tiny bit different. So instead, I'm going to actually use this and mark on. I'll put it in the corner. I'll have to get to the end. Make sure it's in the corner. And use that to mark the width of my card. And then I'm going to use my paper trimmer to cut a straight edge all the way down there so just bear with me a second while I grab the paper trimmer now I have to use my big trimmer for this because this is too big for the um, mini guillotine So whatever paper trimmer you have that will cut this length. Okay, let's rub out my pencil mark. Okay, and then I need the scoreboard back. Now let me put that that way. Yeah, I'm going to put it that way. And I think you can see. No, you can't quite see what I'm doing. So let me just so move the camera back. That's better. Okay. So I think you can see what I'm doing. So I've just laid it lengthwise along the scoring board. Now, oh, I also need to trim the length of it. But I can do that in a minute. So let me do my score lines and I need to score it at three and six because this is six inches long and I need a score line in the middle and a score line at the end of it. So at three and at six. OK, and then it's up to you if you trim this or not, you could trim it. If you're using US letter, you'll only have a piece of paper 11 inches long. I'm using A4. It's just over 11 and a half inches long. It's still shorter than that piece, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So let's bring the camera back in a bit. So I've got my two score lines. So one of them is going to be where my base 
and the upright part of my card meet. So that's that one. I need to burnish that one. I've got another bang folder here. And then I need to fold in that one. So both these score lines go in the same way. So up and then back down. Okay. So I'm going to want to decorate this part of my card. So that's easier to do before you go, you do this bit in some, than before you attach the two. So let's find some paper to do that. Um, could use a piece of this. That's not that, that piece isn't big enough. But we could go for that piece, couldn't we? Um, maybe have that border at the front. That would look quite nice. Okay. So that's going to need to be trimmed. So I am going to get my guillotine back. And I'm going to decide what length I want this so that I know what size to make that. So at the moment... This is, oh yeah, the size I can't really see. So if I make that yeah, five and a half, actually, do I need to do that? Oh, I know what I can do. Right. So if I put this, if I line this up here in my guillotine, so that I'm not going to cut it, it's, it's literally pushed against the 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 edge and then I put my cardstock in and I'm putting it in the opposite way round to what I'm actually going to use it so I'm going to then bring this edge this edge up to the crease line okay like that and I can just bring that back a little bit if I want to or over or in fact it wouldn't matter if the card was overhanging a little bit and I cut both at the same time and then I would know they were exactly the right length for each other so let's do that there we go so oops as well as my trimming my paper I've just cut that little bit off the, the card I'm using for my base and then I can turn that around and trim that now i definitely don't want to take anything off my card base that way so that should be four inches i'm going to cut this just a bit over so that i can trim it afterwards now you could mat and layer if you want to um, but i'm just going to put that on there in fact, I'm glad I did do it slightly over because that is just about right. Okay, so you can put that down with some ordinary double-sided tape. It doesn't need to be high tack. Or wet glue if you prefer. Whatever way you normally stick your, your papers down. to peel part way get everything lined up and then stick it down so I'm just going to bend this up so I know I've, I'm, I've not gone too far that way I'm going to make sure it's snug with the sides and then I'm going to stick it at these ends while I'm holding it now it's stuck there I can just pull those out and 
where the paper falls back into place is in exactly the right place. Okay. Now I will want to stop her on here, but the next thing I'm going to do is attach this. So this needs to be attached to that piece of card there. So I'm going to use high tack for this. Because it's going to get moved about a lot. So for this, now make sure you're going to get it the right way up because we don't want upside down flowers or, or writing. Okay, and the bottom of it has to line up with the bottom. Okay, so I don't know if you want to turn it over and do it, that might be easier. So make sure it's the right way up, so that way, and then got that right. So the bottom of it, this, yes, it's going to end up like this. So that edge and the bottom of this need to be stuck together. Okay. So, so the bottom, maybe I'll put a B on there just so I know it's the bottom. Yeah, the bottom. So I've marked the bottom so I can't get muddled up. So I can turn this over and then I just want to line this up very carefully. that sits on there okay and that's ended up sticking out slightly I'm going to trim that step back can I trim it at the back yeah I can just Once it's halfway, it doesn't really matter. Ideally, take a bit more care. There we are. So, there's our easel. It needs a stopper. So, I've got... Now, I cut from these papers. But say anything you want to use as a stopper is fine. Uh, and buried it. I had everything organised when I started. Let me move those. Not under there. Not under there. Yeah, there. Oh, there we are. My bits and pieces to decorate. So, obviously, add as much decoration as you want. Um, so, I've got one of these lovely hearts that's part of this kit. So that that could go up there. And then I can use this as my stopper. It's going to need at least, at least a couple of foam pads and I, I'm probably going to put a butterfly on it as well. pad on there I'm going to add another layer as well because otherwise the, the edge of the frame will slip over the top Okay, 
this is going to be my stopper. Okay, and I think I'm going to put my stopper. I'm going to turn this, I'm going to put it about here, but I'm going to turn it to face me so that I can actually see what I'm doing and get it straight. I think I want that about there. There we are. And then I'm going to add a butterfly. I should have, there we are. Is that another butterfly? That's my other butterfly. So I've, I've used some on this one. These, these ones are just die cut. So, you know, th this isn't a foiling video. It's just what I fancy doing to decorate. So I think I'm going to put a cream butterfly on that as well. There's my wet glue. And while we're decorating, we can just lay it out flat. And to get the curve on these, because they're, they're foiled and it's on card, I've just rolled them round a pencil rather than folding them. So I think I'm going to put that there so I can still read the writing. I'm going to put my, put my heart at the top or the bottom. I think I might put my heart at the bottom. And I'm only putting glue on the edges where it will stick. So I'm sticking it to the edge of the frame. go down there and then I'm just going to add I think I'm going to put I think I'll probably put a butterfly at the corner where's my pencil there it is and one down the bottom But you can you can put as much decoration as you want. So you can add your decoration, sticking it in the frame. So I'm gonna put that there. Now I'm gonna put I'm gonna put that one in the frame, put that at the top there. Maybe just so it wings up the side. That's it. I'm going to need to curl that some more. there we are so I've kept that one quite simple it's got the foiling for some extra decoration as I say once you've made your your box frame it, it's really up to you how far you go with decorating it put the camera just up a little that's better so you can actually see it there we are so a great little make with the get your creation scoring board um, and the butterfly garden papers. So thank you for watching.